viewers, welcome back to the Odoo 18 tutorial series by Cybrosis. Today we are going to dive into the world of procurement and learn how to create a request for quotation or simply an RFQ in Odoo 18. This is a crucial step in the purchasing process, allowing you to compare quotes from multiple windows and make informed decisions. To create an RFQ, we have to first navigate into the purchase module. So this is the purchase module. And once you open it, you can see the request for quotation section and this will also show the pre-created RFQs in a list view. So let's create a new one just by clicking on the new button over here. Now clicking on the new button will open a new form where you can enter the necessary information. So here is what you need to fill in. This is the vendor, the vendor reference, agreement, currency, order deadline, the expected arrival, you know, asking for confirmation, the project and so much more. So here under the vendor, you have to select the vendor or supplier you want to request a quote from. So here I am choosing wood corner. So here you have wood corner. I'm choosing wood corner as the vendor. And here this is the reference, vendor reference. So this can be a unique reference number for the RFQ. Okay, so if there is any Sorry, not for the RFQ, for the vendor. So if there is a unique reference number for this particular vendor that can be chosen or, you know, that can be specified over here. And here comes the agreement, which is the purchase agreement. So you might have heard about the blanket order and all. So if any agreements are created, that can be chosen from here. So this is a blanket order. Currently, I'm not choosing any agreements. Let it be there. So we'll be talking about blanket orders and all. That is the purchase agreement now in another video in detail. Okay. So here you have the currency, by default it's USD. By any chance, if you want to change it, you can use it from the drop-down menu. So this is the order deadline. That is, you can choose a day on which the order is been, you know, I mean, the order will expire, okay? So you have, you might have noticed this thing, which is 100% on time delivery. So this data is taken based on the vendor we choose. So in previous RFQs and all, if the same vendor is chosen and that vendor's, you know, arrival and all, that is the arrival of the product is on time, means this will be shown as 100% on time delivery. So you can click on that and it will be showing the previous data. So previously two, uh, you know, products were delivered and it was on time. You can see on time delivery, 100%. So going back to the purchase order and here you have this expected arrival. So you can choose the arrival date. So I'm putting 31st and clicking on apply. Okay. And here is the ask confirmation one day before. So this is basically to ask confirmation to the vendor uh, before, you know, how many days you are applying means that much. If I'm giving five days means before five days of the confirmation, what happens is that this uh, message will come. So you can see this automatically send a confirmation email to the vendor's X days before the expected receipt date asking him to confirm the exact data. This, this is just for confirming. Okay, an email will be sent to the vendor before X days, which means how many days which we give here. So here it is one day. So one days before. Okay, so you can see and this is the preview of the reminder mail by sending it to yourself. So you can see the preview also just by clicking on this. You can see the preview of the mail and this is the project. So if you want to include this into any particular project or you can add the project from here. Okay, so that's not necessary here. And here comes the product section. Okay, so now let's add the products or services you want to quote. Okay, so what you have to do is click on add a product here and you can add a new line. Okay, so for each line you have to specify what the product, first of all the product, okay. So I am putting basics of furniture creation. That is something else. So I'll just add a caustic block screen. Okay. And confirming it, whether it's wood or white, I'm giving wood one, confirming it. So, which means the product has variance and that's the reason why I've chosen one. Then you have to specify the quantity as I said before. Then there you will have the price as well as the taxes. Okay. You can see the unit price and the tax here. So if you want to add multiple products, you can add it from here. Similarly, as we've seen in the sales module, you can see add a section, add a note and a catalog here. This can also be added over here. Okay. So specific instructions or requirement of the vendor can be added as a note here. Mm -hmm. And here you have the other information. 
where you can see the buyer details that is the logged in person, the payment terms, the fiscal position. So it's for mapping of the tax. You can choose one from here. Okay. And then you have the company, the source document. So what is the source documents? It's basically the reference of the document that generated this purchase order request. And here you have the INCO term. INCO term means international commercial terms, which is used in case of business. Okay. So some INCO terms can be used here. So this will be, uh, I mean, this INCO terms are basically predefined commercial terms used in international transactions. So any INCO term which are pre-created can be used here. Okay. And then you have the INCO term location as well. Okay, so once you're done by adding the product, so the very basic thing is to add a vendor as well as the products which are required. Okay, so once you've done, you can see the stage of the RFQ is in RFQ itself. And now if you send this by mail, it will change the state to RFQ sent. So I'm clicking on send by mail and it's been loaded. Okay, so this will be the format of the mail. And once you're okay with it, you can click on send. And what happens is that this is currently in RFQ sent state. This RFQ is sent to the vendor. Now, after you confirm the order, what happens? The RFQ turns out to be a purchase order. So I'm clicking on confirm the order. And now it's a purchase order. So confirmed RFQs are what we call as purchase orders. So once the purchase order is created, next step is to receive the products. Okay, so I'm clicking on receive the product. Okay, so before moving on to receive the product, you can see a receipt has been created here. If you click on that, here you can validate it. So it's exactly the same thing which we are doing. This is the receipt which I've opened. If you go back to the purchase order and click on receive products, it will take you to the, you know, receipt. Okay, and from here you can validate the details which you have given. Okay, so I'm validating, clicking on validate. So it's in done state. Okay, now if you go back to the purchase order, you can see a new button has come, which is called create bill. So I'm going to create a bill for the received, which I validated. Okay, so just check on all these things and make sure you specify the bill date. Okay, so I'm specifying the date over here and then you have to confirm it. Okay, so the bill is confirmed. The vendor bill reference number and all is here. And the next step is to pay for it. So click on pay and you can choose the journal, the payment method, the amount and check on all these things. Once you're okay with it, you can click on create payment. Okay. As you can see, the payment is done and it is in payment state. Okay. So if you go back to the purchase order, you can see the vendor bill. So this is the vendor bill. And then if you go back, you can see the receipt as well. Okay, so this is how easily you can actually create it. So what you have to do is once you've filled in all the necessary information, click the send button to send the RFQ to the selected vendor. You can also even print or email it. Okay, directly from Odo you can do that. And this is basically how you do it. That's it. So by following these simple steps, you can efficiently create RFQs in Odo 18 and streamline your procurement process. So remember to customize your RFQs to meet your specific needs. So that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. For more audio tutorials and tips, subscribe to our channel. And that's it. Thank you so much. See you guys in the next video.